Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. We're starting part C of our 2013 open paper. Now, just a reminder, these last four questions, the part C questions, they require full explanations, justification, citing any theorems, showing your calculations, explaining your reasoning, all that stuff. That's required to get the marks. Okay, so we're going to look at C1. This is probably the easiest of them, and it's certainly easier than some of the B part questions. Uh, but it's worth 10 marks, so we do still want to be careful and write everything down. All right, in the diagram, AOB is a triangle with uh, O at 0, 0, A at 0, 30, and B at 40, 0. So already I know some side lengths. And this is going to be a nice little right angle triangle. Okay. Uh, let C be the point on AB for which OC is perpendicular to AB. All right. So what have we got? Uh, determine the length OC. All right, so that's this length in here. We might call that C. And we have to ask ourselves, all right, how, how am I going to figure that out? Okay. Uh, I can think of a couple ways to do this. So knowing that we've got a right angle triangle, you can not too uh, difficult. Uh, it's not too difficult to find that this uh, side length AB is 50. You could probably set up some sort of uh, set of equations in saying something like th 30 squared is x squared plus c squared, and 40 squared is c squared plus 50 minus x squared. You'll have two equations, two unknowns. You should be able to solve for c from there. And I think that would be a perfectly fine way to do the question. It's not what I'm going to do, however. Although we might need to do something like that in later parts of the question. But what I'm going to do is use some similar triangles. Okay, so we'll get the previous question out of the way. And maybe I can hopefully draw some nice... I'm, off, I'm slanted here. There we go, that's a little bit better. There we go. So we'll draw a nice little right angle triangle here. But what we're going to have is a series of similar triangles here. So we'll, I'll, I'll proudly declare that will say use similar triangles, but if I'm going to use similar triangles, I should show which triangles are similar to which. So we've got this uh, little angle here, and you don't have to make a big fuss of it. I mean, if you want to, you can say, you know, angle uh, B O or B A O B A O uh, is equal to 90 degrees minus angle A B O. Uh, and angle uh, COA is equal to 90 degrees minus CAO, but that's equal to BAO. You can do this. That's perfectly fine. But I think a well-drawn picture, clearly labeled, uh, does things just fine. So 90 minus the red dot, or, you know, um, the guy, is, one of the, the people who taught me uses checks and X's and dots all the time. I, I, you know, I've got colors, so I just use colored dots when I explain things to you guys nowadays. Uh, so we got angle there and 90 degrees minus this angle here, but we're going to then get a red dot here, because we've got a nice little right angle triangle here. And similarly, we'll get 90 minus the red dot here. So you might just be able to say, we can see by the picture, that uh, ACO is similar to, and you want to keep uh, things, the, the you want to you wanna order your letters in the right way. So we start with the red dot and go to the 90. So we'll start with the red dot and then go to the 90. And then we'll start, so if our bottom triangle, we'll start with the red dot O, go to the 90 at C, and then go to B. So all these triangles are similar. So how is this going to help me? Well, uh, we should be able to say something to the effect of uh, OC, which appears here and appears here. OC over something I do know, which is uh, AO. Let's call it OA, is equal to the same ratio as OC over. Well, actually, let's. Um, let's see. 
OC over AC is equal to the same thing as OB over uh, which one? OB over AO. Okay, so that's that's a nice little fact, and I know these is uh, forty over thirty. Okay. Um, so what else can we say? So this is 4 over 3. And then uh, what else could we do? Well, we could say uh, AC. I'll, I'll switch it up with some colors. AC over AO is equal to the same thing as, uh, let's say, CO over OB. Well, uh, oops, that's the same relationship again. Silly me, silly me. Um, what else can we do? Oh, uh, CB. We should use CB somewhere. So there's CB. So CB over CO is equal to the same thing. So BO over AO, or OB over AO. Which again, 40 over 30, that's 4 over 3. So what does this tell me? Well, CB is 4 thirds OC, and OC is 4 thirds AC. Okay, just rearranging our two. And so combining them, we get CB is 16 ninths AC. And you might say something like by Pythagoras, OC squared, or sorry, not OC, AB A, B squared is AO squared plus BO squared, which is 30 squared plus 40 squared. So AB is 50. But AB is also AC plus CB which is uh, AC plus 16 ninths AC. So we can see 50 is, uh, so let's make AC 9 ninths AC, so 25 ninths AC. And so we can see AC is 18. And then OC, the length that we want, is 4 thirds AC. So that's going to be 24. And if you want to, you can double check, divide this by 3, multiply by 4, you'll get BC is 32, and that does add up with 18 to be 50. So OC is 24. I'm sure this is not the only uh, arrangement you could do with similar triangles to figure it out. But I think it's a little easier than, than doing a bunch of algebra involving X's and, and 50 minus X's. I think, I think it's just a little cleaner. Oops. There we go. Okay, uh, so B part. B part. Determine the coordinates of point C. Okay. So, uh, what to do? Well, I think it might just be easier to figure out the slope of AB, and then we know OC is perpendicular to that, and perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals. So, uh, we might say something like slope of AB is difference in the y coordinates over difference in the x coordinates and we get negative three-fourths and this makes sense because that should slope downwards okay so the slope of oc is going to be the negative reciprocal for slope of a b and you could say you know a b perpendicular to oc if you want to explain it so we get uh four thirds Kind of nice. We saw four thirds earlier, actually. So four thirds. So OC looks like Y equals four thirds X. 
and you can say O is on the line, therefore the y-intercept is zero, if you wanted to further explain that, but I think just having this would be perfectly fine. And so now, okay, C is on both lines, so let's find a point of intersection. So the y-coordinates have to be the same, so 4 thirds x has to be equal to, well, what's the slope for a, or what's the line for AB? Well, it's going to be negative 3 fourths x plus 30. Y 30? A is the y-intercept, and so A is at 0, 30. Okay. All right, so now let's uh, get a common denominator. So we might say 8 twelfths x is equal to negative 9 twelfths x plus 30. So 17 twelfths x is equal to 30. Multiply by 12, divide by 17, and we will get 360 over 17 is equal to x. Now we don't just want x, we want the coordinates for c as well. So we need to plug in and get the y value. y is 4 thirds x, so that's going to be 4 times 120 over 17. I've already divided by 3, so this should be 480 over 17. So C has coordinates of uh, 360 over 17, 480 over 17. And if you wanted to, you could double check to see that OC really does have a length of 24. How would you do that? Well, we can figure out the distance between two points, taking the difference in their X coordinates and squaring that and the difference in their y-coordinates and squaring that. And now there'll be 120 over 17 for both of them. And then the square root of uh, what's left over 3 squared plus 4 squared, which should be equal to something's gone wrong. Oh, this isn't an 8. This is a 16. Good. I was wondering why that 17 was there. That's why I wanted to do this extra double-check step because... That did not look like a correct number to me. So 25, and there we go. A little embarrassing to make a mistake on C1 since it's supposed to be a very easy question, but that's okay. I managed to uh, do a little check work, and it showed me why this was going to be nonsense. All right, uh, so 360 over 25. Well, you divide 5 on both sides. We can say 5 twelfths x is equal to 6. So we'll get 72 over 5, which is a much healthier number. 72 over 3 is 24, so 4 times 24 over 5, and this should be uh, 96 over 5. And now, well, we can still double check. So 72 over 5, uh, 96 over 5, but I'm a little happier with these numbers. So we'll be able to pull out a, a 24 over 5 here. And so that'll be 24 times the square root of 25 over 5. Those will cancel out, and I will get 24. So a nice little double check like that can help, because that 17 shouldn't have been in there, and I'm glad I caught that. All right, so now C part. Let M be the center of the circle passing through OAB. So that'll actually be somewhere on AB. We'll explain that in a moment if we need it. So there's the center of the circle. Determine the length CM. Okay. So. Uh, let's say... AB... Well, I'd draw a little picture, actually. So AB is a chord of the circle, and, uh, and, uh, and O is on the circle. Now, since angle AOB is 90 degrees, 
This means AB is a diameter. Before the circle. So this is a nice result uh, that if you've got a diameter and you make a triangle with another point on the circle, you'll get a right angle. And if you've got a chord, just a line that go touches, goes from one point to another point on the circle, and using another point, you get a 90 degree at that other point, then the chord you must have started with is a diameter. It's a nice little circle geometry result. Okay. Uh, do you have to do it this way? Absolutely not. You could use the coordinates for A, O, and B that you're given and figure out the formula for the, the circle in terms of uh, coordinate geometry. And, and then you'd be able to find the center of the circle because you'd get something like uh, this. And I have no idea what the radius would be. But you could, you could figure out a formula like that. You do have three points, and that should determine a circle. But I think doing something like this is just a little nicer, neater, and cleaner. Circle geometry doesn't come up a lot in the regular school curriculum, but it can be very helpful on a math contest. So M is on a B. Not only that, it is the midpoint. So, M has coordinates. How do we find uh, midpoint coordinates? Well, you add up the, oops, wrong ones. You add up the X coordinates and divide by two, and you add up the Y coordinates and divide by two. So it'll be 20, 15. Okay, so 20, 15, that makes sense, but it's halfway up there and halfway over there. Good. All right, and so what's the diff what's the, the length CM? Well, you could could try and do some fancy right angle triangle work here, but I'm just going to use the formula for the distance between two points. Okay, because I figured out the coordinates for C in the last question, so why don't we use them? So difference in the x coordinates squared plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared. Okay, simple as that. And uh, let's say 5 there, so 100 minus 72 all over 5, and we'll square that. Plus uh, 5 times 15, 75 minus 96 all over 5, we'll square that. 100 minus 72 is going to be a 28. So 28 over 5 squared, and then the difference between 75 and 96 is 21. Technically, it's negative 21 over 5 squared. Uh, let's pull out a 1 over 5. So we're left with 28 squared plus 21 squared. Now, this does not uh, give me, I think, a nice... Oh, oh, we can take out a factor of 7. So we can pull out a 7 there. And we'll get 4 squared plus 3 squared. Oh, okay. So this will be another 3, 4, 5. So this will be 7 uh, root 25 all over 5. And so this will just be 7. Okay. And actually, if this is a 7, this is a 24, then, then we could have gotten a 25 here. And so we probably could have done a nice little Pythagorean triangle thing there. But we didn't need to. Distance formula worked out just fine. So determine the length of CM, it's 7, and that's all we need to do. So that's uh, C1, up next will be C2, and then C3, and so on. So if you haven't already, give the Part C questions a try, see what you can make of them. Even if you just do, you know, A part on each of the questions, assuming they each have an A part, you know, just doing a little bit of each can get you some marks and gets you some good practice. So I will see you for C2 in the next video.